Her's the only one that brings a notebook in. She can't read or write, but she does it. <laughs> Hey guys, we're here at the gym at Ludus Magnus. We're getting ready to train our asses off. We're gonna squat really hard. This is one of the first big squats back from my motorcycle ride. So let's get to it and let's see what we got going on for today. The trick is with a lot of this stuff is you gotta stay fit year round. You gotta keep your conditioning high. That's why the winning warm up works so well. So you can see I just did 145 pounds on the bell squat for 25. Just pull four plates backwards for 50 steps. I'm gonna do a minute plank. It's 90 something degrees in here. I'm not sweating and I'm really not that tired. So if that's not you, get to work. And we're gonna check the time. Now let's check my time. It says. <laughs> <laughs> So that's one round. So when you go heavier, we're gonna do three rounds um, and cut down the volume just a tick because the intensity is higher. So a lot of times what I found out in the winning warm-ups is four sets 25 is a general guideline and I used it for many, many years and it worked really well. But what I've realized is that a lot of people, if you wave two rounds, three rounds, four rounds, and maybe run four rounds, two, three weeks, and go two rounds, three rounds, four rounds, you're giving your body a little bit of a break to actually adapt to the training. So you can't just keep doing more, you have to do it smart. Remember every rep that you're doing, even a warm-up, is dialing in what you think the right form is. Just get comfortable, get the work Done. A lot of it's telling your body what you're gonna do. So what made you decide to pick Matt? He's never hurt. It's pretty much his injuries and all that kind of stuff. Avoiding injury, I should say. Super smart. All the videos I watch. He's a smart dude, so I feel like there's really nobody better to learn from. And a lot of times people ask, you know, hey Matt, how would you modify this or change this for age differences? Well, Demeter right now going on the bell squat is 52. Boy down there is 55. Good looking too. I mean, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Andy's kind of in the beginner stages of strength. This works for everything, but the only reason I'd say it doesn't need modified here is because they're standing around me the whole time. Like, just like you would get in online coaching, we're watching every set, dialing in everything. Brooke's getting ready to go. She's close to 40. She won World's Strongest Woman in 2017. So now she just trains just to kind of stay in shape. When you get older or your bench press is really strong, you have to warm up your shoulders to squat. So I'm gonna squat with this bamboo bar today, but you can see I'm getting my shoulders ready and prepped right now. I am not flexible enough to get under the bar. This would not be a good spot for me to squat. I need to be down here, but that's not comfortable right now. So while I'm waiting for the bell squat to open up, I'm loosening up my shoulders. So everything's ready. We use Alro Steel quarter inch. It's all USA made, super strong. We've had over a thousand pounds on this and it won't even budge. Elevator grade bearings, it's just a monster. And so for a piece of equipment to invest in, it's probably gonna outlast you and your kids and your kids' kids. This is the one to do. Chris Walker, he's coming in for an assessment. You guys can all do that. All you have to do is DM me or get a hold of the website and we can do this. So instead of assessing somebody's core with exercises like McGill 3 or whatever, put somebody under a bamboo bar and see how bad they shake. If they're not shaking and they're pretty stable like that, see his core is not his fucking weakness. And it's way more specific to actual squatting movements and powerlifting and, in my opinion, sports. So you can go to a lot of these little assessment movements, but this son of a bitch will tell you everything. Foot pressure, ab tightness, which muscles you like to use, etc. I've been training with Matt for 12 years. When I first started here, I was a very different person from a conditioning standpoint. Had some illnesses, had some things going on, and Matt's the only one I've ever been able to train with that I didn't get injured from working out with. Sarah's the only one that brings a notebook in. She can't read or write, but she does it. <laughs> I really can't write, I can't read anything. Mine would be diary, but what do you mean? It's mostly just pages of dick pics. <laughs> <laughs> Can I show you something? I'm like, but it's not me. And then I show him, like, I Google Matt on Instagram, like, follow him. Yeah. This is where I learned everything. But they're probably like so tired of hearing me, but I'm like, it's good information, people.
Kyle, the guy you just saw go, he's 42 years old. He works 50 hours a week as a sergeant in the police department, and he's their lawyer for body cameras with a two-year-old girl and still makes it into train. So stop with the excuses. Yeah, you'll see that the things we notice even in the very light sets are the exact same weaknesses we noticed in the squat. Everything kind of plays together, you know? So we're gonna notice those same weaknesses when he benches too. So right now we just, he's all anterior, no posterior. So, but we're gonna let him keep going without coaching him too much because we wanna see where his natural weaknesses are. Tell him a little bit about it. Don't have him change anything, but that's definitely a big pointer cue. <laughs> Cause you see he's wide like he's gonna use his glutes and then all he uses is his legs and his back. It, it's all about the angles. Yeah. I mean, you have femur length and tibia length. You yeah. have all those different yeah. patterns, yeah. right? So it's like, when I'm in that stance, my knees are still out right. and I'm able to use my hips. Right. When you're there, your legs are more straight okay. and you're literally using your quads again. Okay. He's actually, when he goes to pull on it, his butt's coming up first. That means his legs are extending first, so his quads, whether they're stronger than his posterior chain or not, my guess is that they are, which is mirroring what we're seeing in the squat. His hips and his glutes aren't helping, and then it gets into the middle and the top, and they're not there to finish it out. So it's putting him in a bad position at the bottom, and it's causing him to have no power at the top. This is what's so important with these assessments, because we're not trying to fix the deadlift, we're trying to see what the deadlift's telling us, so when he goes home, he's using the right accessory exercises to build up his weaknesses. It's right. your knees are out just like you're in a squat, right? Okay. right? Okay. So right now, you're yeah. like that at yeah. your starting point, there's yeah. no leverage yeah. there. So right here, okay. you want to be almost, I mean, it's... Very similar. Right. Right. It's like I have drive a lot, so I'm sitting a lot, I yeah. guess. So that's probably it got something. Literally, to do with be the way you sit in your right. car. Yeah. That's neurologically just yeah. shutting off that hamstring. Yeah. But that's where all the gym time comes in. You got to turn it back yeah. on. Right. You yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. Occupational. People don't understand how much that affects us. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. yeah you you've got to focus on all that stuff. It's not always an injury. It could just be life. Lately, I've been living like I can't take a loss.